Yom Tov! Today is the first day of November 2019. I welcome you and thank you for being here. My name is Stephen Bruck and this is Messianic Moment Ministries. Today in the second parsha of the annual Torah reading cycle, we read about one of the best known biblical stories, one which is found in nearly every civilization, the Flood. God, of course, fed up with the evil things mankind has been doing and finds Noah to be the only righteous man so he tells Noah to build an ark and that he and his family will collect all the animals of the earth to save them from a flood God will send. The flood comes, people are destroyed, and after about a year or so, Noah and his family, as well as the animals that were saved, can come out of the ark and repopulate the earth. The lineage of the sons of Noah is given, leading up to the story of the Tower of Babel. The Parsha ends with the lineage from Noah's son Shem to Abram, he's not yet called Abraham, and his brothers, and the names of the wives they took while they were still living in Ur. Here's a couple of interesting notes about the flood. One, before the flood, there was no rain. Two, before the flood, people and animals were all herbivores. And three, Noah didn't have one pair of every kind of animal. He had one pair of unclean animals, but seven pairs of clean animals. Now, we all know this story, and I feel led to talk about something that is a lesson we can learn from it regarding parenting skills. Now, in chapter 9, we read how Noah, drunk from wine, passed out and was in a compromising position, meaning he was not just four sheets to the wind, but he was also butt naked. Now, Ham, the youngest son, sees this and laughs about it with his brothers. Instead of showing respect for his father as he should have and do what his brothers did, his older brothers did, which was to cover their father, he made a joke about it. For this show of disrespect, he was cursed by Noah. And from his line of descendants, we have the perpetual enemies of the Jewish people. I read in my Chumash that Noah may have become drunk because this might have been the first wine ever made and he was ignorant of the intoxicating effects of it. Personally, I don't buy that for a moment. But what I see in this part of the Parsha is a lesson for all of us, especially for those who have children still living with them. What we do as parents, whether on purpose or accidentally, will be seen, remembered, and probably repeated by our children. We shape them with everything we do and say, and if we don't show them how to respect and compassionately treat others, they will grow up and have a very difficult time in society. Parenting is the greatest challenge anyone can face. Besides the handicap we all face, which is either trying to be like or be unlike our own parents, the lessons that were imprinted on us from the moment we were born are not only difficult to overcome, but sometimes nearly impossible to recognize. Now, my mother was a strict disciplinarian and believed in corporal punishment. But my father did not. Consequently, there were arguments between them and often I felt this was my fault. Children always think it is their fault when their parents are arguing, especially if it has something to do with the child. Now, I remember sometimes my dad taking me into the garage, slapping his belt on something and telling me to cry out so that my mother was satisfied and he was too. <laughs> Obviously, I thought that was a really good compromise. Noah's actions resulted in Ham being cursed and his descendants for all time serving his brothers. Now, of course, Ham isn't blameless. And the fathers can't be held totally responsible for their son's sins. I mean, the Bible tells us this in Ezekiel 18. But we can't totally absolve parents of responsibility for what their children do because we, as parents, are the ones who are responsible to train them. In today's world, I mean, mostly in the last 40 years or so, parents have lost track of their obligation to properly train their children by wanting to be friends to their children instead of parents. They try protecting them from stress and problems, tell them they are okay no matter what they do, and even deny that the children are problem children. How many times have you seen a news report 
where a young man has brutally attacked someone and the police report that he is well known for doing this, yet the mother says her boy is a good boy. Parents who enable their children and don't have the time to spend with them, maybe because they're just so tired from working, has led to a society of uncaring, discompassionate, and sinful children. And they grow up teaching their kids the lessons their parents taught them. This has resulted in our society becoming what it is today, composed of self-centered, ignorant, and overly sensitive youth who feel entitled to whatever they want. If I want something, not only am I entitled to it, but you have to make sure I get it. And if you say something that bothers me, you are wrong. It doesn't matter if it is true or if you're saying it for my own good. If I don't want to hear it, you're wrong. You know, the world demands people to speak compassionately, but it doesn't want to listen compassionately. I will not even delve into all the different proverbs about how the wise person receives criticism well, because... Frankly, we all know that that is true. The way we tell people something that might be distasteful to them should be done with respect and compassion. And when someone tells us something about ourselves, we should listen with respect and compassion, understanding that if they say something, it's cruel or if it's nasty or just maybe too frankly, maybe they are having a hard time too. Parents influence their children who influence not just their children, but every single person they will ever meet for the rest of their lives. The way we treat each other is something like a geometric progression growing and spreading out like comets in the dough. If my parents don't teach me respect, then I will not respect others, and my children probably will live the same way, as will their children, as will theirs, ad infinitum, or until someone breaks the mold. You know, maybe... This is why God told Moses that he will punish the children for the sins of their parents down to the third or fourth generation. I think God isn't saying that the children will be caused to sin, but maybe what he means is that their parents' sins will be learned by them, and this might take three or four generations before the cycle can be broken. Always be aware of how you treat your children, as well as when they see you interacting with other people. Listen as you would want to be heard. And if you know you have bad habits you've picked up from your parents, try, really, please, try to overcome them. Remember all that God has done for you and always try to act in a way that will please Him because although the third and fourth generation will suffer for your sins, He also told Moses at the same time that He will have compassion on those that obey Him to the thousandth generation. Try saying that three times fast. So, thank you for being here. And please, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click on these icons. Click on subscribe. Go back to my website. Click on the uh, subscribe button in the right-hand margin. I wish you all Shabbat Shalom. And until next time, Behitrot and Baruch Hashem.